Hi guys, welcome back to the farm in Thailand. We're Lee and Toon, and today we're going to talk about the amazing khaki Campbell ducks that we've got, and in our opinion, why we think they're the best ducks for us to keep here in Thailand. Stay tuned. A little bit noisy because the mayor's next door pumping water into his rice paddy. He's just walking up here now, lovely guy. Saudi cab! <laughs> that cab, 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 you can hear that's the girls. Got two boys in here, they're a lot more quiet. Three geese as well make a bit of a racket, so I'll have a walk, walk round, otherwise you might not hear much. So we've got about 130 Campbell ducks. There's a sprinkling of males in with that lot, and we're averaging well over 100 eggs a day. So at the moment, I think we're running at 80%, 87% capacity. Right then, so egg production. They are by far and away the, uh, the most productive of ducks uh, apart from your hybrid layers so um, don't get me wrong khaki campbells aren't a pure breed they're originally bred from I believe it was um, mallards and runners but now they're a, they're a breed in their own right uh, your hybrids probably match them if not better your your campbells by a little bit uh, weight wise so three to five pounds for a full size Campbell. Your boys obviously are the, the heavier ones, so they can get up to about five pounds. So they're probably, you know, a medium sized bird. So you can get more birds in to an area than say if you were gonna breed Pekin. Um, your lighter ones are your runners and your mallards. So if you're really short of space, and you didn't mind compromising on egg production a little bit, then you could go for those two breeds. Uh, the temperament, I mean, they're a lovely duck, but bloody hell, they are nervous. So that's not it's sort of like a, a negative for them. But on the other hand, because they are nervous, if there's anyone around, then the girls soon start kicking off. Very, very noisy. Other ducks, if you want the most chilled duck out there, you're probably better off going for Muscovies or a Pekin or two. Uh, the most skittish of all are your mallards. Your mallards are probably the closest you've got uh, to a wild bird that's actually domesticated. Uh, mothering. Now, I've always thought they were piss poor, but if you put smaller numbers together, um, so let's say seven, seven females to one drake, then they will actually sit on the eggs. But in a number, a batch like this, so we've got 27 here and we've got two males in there, uh, only one or two have attempted to sit on the eggs, um, but we snaffle them away. Uh, the best mothering duck of all that I'm aware of is the mallard. Egg size wise, they compare quite well. You're looking at about 80 grams per egg, but of course they can't compete with something as giant as a, a Muscovy or even bigger than that, a Pekin, and they'll be weighing in at about 100 grams per egg. So they're super size. So you'd get less eggs per year, but you could sell them for a greater amount. Probably my favorite part of keeping these girls is their foraging ability. When you let these out into a pasture or a, a paddy field, honestly, it's like, well, some of you may have seen some of the videos, it's like a bunch of smackheads being let out in a 7-Eleven without security in there. They go crazy. So they're, they're good for eating all sorts of bugs and uh, they clear the weeds very, very quickly. Uh, whereas something like a Muscovy, they're, they're all right, but they're a bit slower across the ground and 
take that one step further to a peak in, it's, uh, it's a little bit cumbersome. So they still would do a job for you, but it will take them a little bit longer. As far as flight capability goes, um, well the Claster's good, but uh, I've seen some epic fails with them. But because they are skittish, you do get the impression that they fly quite a lot. And it's just not the case. They get a bit of air, but I would say they only sort of like, they're airborne for about 15 foot. And that's about it. Your king of the flying ducks are your mallards, of course. They'll end up in bloody China if you, uh, if you don't sort them out. So it's either clipper wing or, I don't know, I really don't know too much about mallards, uh, keeping them domestically. Uh, whether you'd have to take that into consideration or once you've got them from, from duckling they'll stay where the food is. Ours don't try to get out at all. Uh, the, the next thing is the noise. So the, the, the male ducks, I mean generally male ducks are very quiet anyway, but uh, the male ducks here that we've got, they're incredibly quiet. Um, so they're not an issue. The girls are noisy, they do make your ears bleed. But that's only when they're scared or when they're hungry and ducks are just about hungry all the time. They take some filling up. I mean, these are skinny little things, but they never stop eating. These are fed three times a day. And of course, they've got a large area to forage around in here. And we also let them out from time to time to pig out as well. Uh, and then the last reason why I prefer to keep Khaki Campbell ducks over any other duck in the world and it's the most important thing but it's overlooked by everyone. The origin is England. That's right, they were made in England. So like I said, they were, they were crossbred between runners and mallards. Or it might be, oh, well, I'm gonna have to check this. It's definitely runner. I'm not sure if it's a mallard or peking. I'm pretty sure it's a mallard. I will check that out and I'll put it in the description below. I've put a load of more description. I'm trying to be a bit more professional, guys. Uh, I'm doing more research before I press record now. Uh, I'm still not scripting, of course. That would take all the fun and excitement out of it for me and probably you. Uh, but in the descriptions, there's gonna be a lot more meat on the bones for you to pick through there because I know there's quite a few of you that are, are interested in keeping livestock. Okay, that's about it guys. As always, thanks for watching. We will be giving more information in the future uh, about egg production and um, how to increase it uh, and also how to market your, your eggs and how to maximize your profit. So we'll be covering food and what you can do with the eggs as well. Okay, that's it from our fence pond, from me and Toon on YouTube. If you're watching it, not on YouTube, it's been nicked, remember? Please bin it off and come to our channel and have a giggle in the comments section. Thanks guys, ta-da for now.